If someone were to ask me what I thought about the first six captains of the Gotei 13, I would probably say... El Senor Roshi. Why are the hot ones always lesbian? Chinese Orochimaru. Attack of the Milk. You thought it was Jonathan, but it was me, Dio. And the only anime character to ever say no to incest. What's up guys and welcome to my first If I Was Being Honest video. Since the Bleach Thousand Year Blood War arc is finally getting an adaptation, I figured that today we're going to roast the Gotei 13. I'm splitting this into two parts, so for now, it's only the first six. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see part two, but without further ado, let's just jump into it. Oh, old man Yamamoto. I don't get what was going on through the Soul Society's mind when they picked him to lead the Gotei. Out of everyone they could have picked, they picked the one guy who's too old to get a boner. Oh wait, he's a fucking old guy. I see they knew their shown in tropes not to mess with the old guy. Like how many overpowered old white haired characters can we name? There's Yamamoto, Jiraiya, Roshi, Genkai, Netero, Makara. I feel like you just give him a pair of glasses and he'd look exactly like Master Roshi. When I tell people this, they always tell me, at least he's not a pervert. And to that I respond with, are you sure? I think the eyebrows say otherwise. If you didn't think that Soifon was best girl before Nell, you're crazy. I mean, she's hot, smart, and good at fighting. What's not to like? Oh right, she's definitely gay for Yoroichi. She's definitely one of the simpiest characters I've seen in a long time. I cannot tell you how much hentai I have not seen of these two characters. I have definitely never watched or read hentai before. God, I'm going out. But she has the most overpowered Bankai of all time. Get this, you hit somebody twice in the same spot and they die. Isn't that broken? It's not like anything else could do that. Poison. You know what, just poison the blade and the opponent dies in one touch, not two. And it's not like stealth forces are known to use poison and stuff. But obviously overpower Bankai aside, let's talk about how amazingly important she was to the story. Now most people would say that she was completely weak and useless. This always makes me shake my head. Like weren't you paying attention to CBR's list? They clearly said that Soifon could take down both Kempachi and Grimja. That makes complete sense. Gee, uh... And then... Moving on, let's talk about Orochimaru... <coughs> Sorry, Yin. Most people say this guy is literally just Orochimaru if he was Chinese. But why? Their names don't even sound alike. Ichimaru and Orochimaru. Hmm... Nope, no resemblance whatsoever. At least he didn't betray his organization. Oh, wait. You know, when I was researching for this video, apparently Gein is super popular, like especially among girls. Like, are you serious? This guy. One look at him and I already know that he's a pedophile. Wait, he's actually kinda hot. Fuck! Yay, I'm a fan girl. Who else forgot that Uno Hana was part of the Gote 13? I sure did. She's basically Tsunade with smaller tits. Her only job is to somehow appear at the perfect time to heal any of the important characters whenever they get hurt. But at least she's not scared of blood, you know? You gotta be a real idiot to be a doctor and afraid of blood. I don't know what to say about her, I just kinda forgot she existed. But who sees this haircut and thinks, hey, I think that's cool? Nobody. Nobody ever. You can't deny that Sosuke Aizen was one of the best villains in history. Like when he stopped Ichigo Sword in the Soul Society arc, that was the coolest thing ever. Aizen's the only dude dope enough to steal the main character's power up just to show off. Now you might think that it's a power scaling issue. Let me explain why it makes perfect sense. So one, he took off his glasses. We all know that in anime, light reflecting glasses always means big brain, but lose in a physical fight. So one power up there. And secondly, he slicked his hair back. Can you believe it? I can't believe he had the audacity to do that. Like bro, leave some girls for the rest of us. I feel like I've seen too many incest anime accounts, and I was sure this was going to be the same. I mean, I'll give you a quick summary of the Soul Society arc's plot. So basically, there's this guy whose adopted sister, not related by blood, broke a few rules, and now he has to punish her, who is not related by blood. Did I mention they're not related by blood? You know what, this isn't even an incest anime anymore, it's basically hentai. The only thing it needs now is Rukia stuck in a dishwasher. But I will give Byakuya one thing, he really loves his sister. Now, I can already hear the arguing, but sheesh, pay attention, would ya? Once again, our lord and savior, CBR, made the most astute observation that Biafia dotes on Rukia. I mean, it's not like he did anything bad to her. But you know what makes me really like this guy? 
He was willing to lose to Ichigo's Bankai just to show off the almighty power of beginner's luck. Remember back when Ichigo going Bankai was the coolest thing ever? Until it immediately became irrelevant after the fight. Like literally 2 seconds later, Aizen bodies it with a finger. This guy is so cool, he was willing to lose to Ichigo just to make Aizen seem more badass. And I mean, not everyone is powerful enough to almost be killed by their own Bankai. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, I sure enjoyed making it. I'm currently in the Fake Katakura Town arc, so I still haven't actually finished the series yet, but I'm definitely enjoying it. Remember, if you like this video and subscribe, Kubo promised that he would give even more fan service in Bleach 2020. So see you later.